all the world to stage. And all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. At first the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms, and then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress' eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths, and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly, with good cape and lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The sixth age, shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful hose, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice, turning again toward childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all, that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness, a mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one person in their time plays many parts. Their acts, seven generations. The infant, wailing and puking in the nurse's arms. And then the whining schoolboy with his book bag and sleep shine face. Snail, slow pacing it unwillingly to school. And then the lover, breathing like furnace with tortured poem writ to lover's eyebrow. Then a soldier. Tongued with foreign words, panther bearded, ready to defend, deft and quick with fight, seeking quick fleeting fame as head inserts itself into cannon's mouth. And then the justice, with belly swollen by the eating of bribes, with eyes severe and beard bi weekly trimmed, full of wisdom's tongue and daily news, and so they play their part. The sixth age shifts to the lean and slippered withered man, spectacles on nose, wallet clenched by side. His youthful stockings, now a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly sound turning again toward childish timber pipes and whistles in his voice. Last scene of all. That is the end of this strange, event-filled life, turns us back to second childhood. Oblivion. No teeth. No eyes. No taste. No... thing. No thing. In the commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate. Letters should not be known. Riches, poverty, and use of service. None. Contract, succession, born, bound of land, tilth, vineyard. None. No use of metal corn, or wine, or oil, no occupation. All men idle, all, and women too, but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. Yet he would be king, aunt. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. 
all things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. A treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine, I would not have. But nature should bring forth of its own all kind of foison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. In my commonwealth, I would manage all things on the principle of opposites. I would allow no form of commerce, appoint no magistrates, book learning abolished. Wealth, poverty, masters, servants, none. Contracts, wills, landed gentry, farming vineyards, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil, no work. All men idle, all, and women too, but innocent and pure. No royal privilege, except his own, as king. <laughs> he ends up with a commonwealth that forgets how it began. Nature would produce all we need for common use, without sweat or labor. At treason, felony, sword, spear, knife, gun, or the need of any machinery I would prohibit. Nature would bring forth every kind of crop, in abundance everywhere to feed my people, my innocent people. Go. Bid thy mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain. Ah. I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. <laughs> Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth the rest. I see thee still. And on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood, which is not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now o'er the one half world nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain's sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings and withered murder, alarmed by a sentinel the wolf, whose house is watched thus with a stealthy pace. Tarkin's ravishing strides towards his design moves like a ghost. Though sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps, which way they walk for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabouts and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. While I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Go. Bid thy mistress, when my nightcap's ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, 
Let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Fatal vision, art thou not meant to be held as firmly as seen? Art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation conjured by a feverish inflamed brain? Still I see thee, seeming as deadly real as this which now I draw. Thou ushers me further down that fatal path, the selfsame instrument I was to use. Do the other senses make my eyes foolish, or are they wiser than the rest? I still see thee, and on thy blade and thy hilt drops of blood, which is not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business bidding this vision to mine eyes. Now o'er half the world sleeps as sound as the dead. Nightmares poison that curtain sleep. Foul witchcraft honors moon pale Hecate. Offers old man murdered, worn by his watchman, the wolf whose howl speeds him with a stealthy pace and a rapist stride to his ravished goal in ghostly silence. Thou sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps, which way they walk for fear thy stones will whisper of my whereabouts and take away the horror of surprise which suits the time. While I speak, he lives. Words blown cold cool the heat the deed gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for its death knell will summon thee to heaven or to hell. <laughs>